Syracuse, Notre Dame, a top 25 matchup. And it gets underway right now with the Orange winning the tip. Pair will run the offense for the Orange. Quickly, Rice in. This is off to Woolley. Woolley down low, has the pocket picked by Hannah Hidalgo. Hidalgo goes racing and can't make the layup quickly. Notre Dame in their man-to-man -man defense. Citron trying to full out deny on DeAsia Fair. Syracuse lineup that has been consistent all year long as another takeaway. Too far of a pass for Hannah Hidalgo to try and reach Maddie Westfeld. And we talked about it coming in. We knew it was going to be a track meet between these two. We've already seen it so far. Exactly. A steal to start and Hannah Hidalgo wide, op wide open layup missed. But we expect to see a track meet. It's whoever can rebound the best in this game and protect the three-point line has the advantage. Holy. Top of the key. Drives in, sees the lane, takes on two. Goes off the iron. And now to Wolf will push forward. Off to the corner for Citron for three. Rattles around, can't go into the hands of Rice. Rice will pull it out. Set up. Turkey's team that's tied for first in the ACC currently with UNC. Fair. Can't get it. Loose rebound. Picks it up herself. Brings it back out. One second left on the shot clock. Rice at the buzzer. Can't get it. Woolley with the rebound in the first basket goes. That is one of the things they are relentless on the offensive glass. One of the things that Coach Jack really takes pride in offensive rebounding, and they do it well. The Notre Dame lineup has been consistent all year long. Now that they've worked through their injuries, West Bell back to consistency. Citron back in there consistently as well. Yeah, we're seeing Citron and West Bell really get back into the flow. Westbelt had to adjust to playing with that face mask, which she's doing very well now. And Citron really finding her rhythm and timing on her shot after a significant layoff due to injury. Ethan charged with the foul. Watson trying to work it into the paint. Big rebound once again for Wood. And an unnecessary foul 90 feet away from the basket. Right, just a little frustrated. I think she went up on that layup thinking that she absorbed some contact on that shot. But look for Syracuse to be extremely physical on the glass tonight. There. Work it around. Kickball called. Deja Finger winning both. USBWA National Player of the Week honors, as well as the ACC Player of the Week with 22 points versus Pitt. And then the program record, like you talked about, Karen, against Florida State, put exactly. together a stellar week last week. She really did, and she was the catalyst in the two comeback wins. Huge deficits. They were able to overcome two 18-point deficits to beat Clemson and Florida State. Isom can't get it down, and Dalgo just, once again, a little too high for Citron to possess near the orange bench. A little sloppy to start the game for Notre Dame. A little miscommunication on that pass there from Hildago to Citron. Nathan, back off to Rice. Rice looking for the high screen to Woolley. Woolley from the elbow. Rolls around into Hannah Hidalgo's hands. The freshman trying to go coast to coast and gets the basket. She is so good at taking the contact. And a quick basket for Citron, reading it. Staying up on the man mark against Fair. Steal and a score. Rice, off to Woolley. Woolley. Part of the 
There were players that came over with Coach Jack from Buffalo where she got her start now in her second season here with the Orange. And Notre Dame looking to just change up the matchups. First possession, Citron was trying to face guard, deny fair. These last couple of possessions, DeWolf took a turn, as well as Hildago taking a turn to try to wear fair down. You've really got to be able to contain her if you want to win this basketball game for Notre Dame. Coley, first in the ACC at free throw percentage, unlike her there to miss one. And it will go off Watson off a strong play as referees will convene. As they'll switch to call and go the other way. Replay showed that it did go off Syracuse. Latham just jumped out of bounds with the ball in her hand. So it looks like Notre Dame will take over. Let's see if they can clean up their offense a little bit here with the passing and get a bucket on this possession. On the top of the key, Westbound for the corner three. Can't get it. Now fair. With the wolf on her, the transfer from Florida. Deja Fair gets fouled beyond the arc. There'll be three free throws coming for Fair. The wolf did a good job of shadowing Fair, just a little too overzealous there. Hit her on the arm. So the wolf goes to the bench now to take a breather after that that foul call there. Fair at the free throw line, averaging 20 points, four rebounds. She is an 87% free throw shooter. So you do not want to foul her if you're Notre Dame. Fourth in the ACC. So a little bit of a revenge game here, Notre Dame. After losing in New York and for Syracuse, if they could beat Notre Dame twice to prove that they belong in the top of the ACC, they're sitting tied with the University of North Carolina at six and one in the ACC. Fair makes them bold. They now lead by two. Syracuse haven't been able to get the job done against the Irish here inside Purcell Pavilion. 0 for 19. Hidalgo for three. Off the iron, go the other way. Notre Dame's now picking up in their man-to-man -man defense. Quick shot by Hildago, missed. Now Notre Dame in man-to-man -man with Citron guarding Fair, trying to face guard her when she lets go of the ball. Down low, right stuck. Kicks it off to Woolley. It's up. Fair, thought about a three. Comes back, high ball screen. Rice now. Changes corner, Dr. Woolley pulls it up. One second left, trying for this hook. No good, rebound there. Latham has it rejected. Woolley finds it in her hands and puts it back. That's four offensive boards for Syracuse this early in the game. You gotta put a body on someone, especially when Notre Dame is in their man-to-man -man defense. Each person is responsible for putting a body on those players. They love to crash the glass. Citron sees an opening, gets found. Going to the basket. Syracuse leading by four here in early in the first quarter. Greatness is a feeling. Even confetti fell for the orange early. It was big buckets down low for their post players of Latham and Rice getting it down low. They would outscore the Irish 25 to 16 in the fourth quarter, and it was Deja Fair with three dagger threes to put it away. Deja Fair is the leader of this team, as we've said, and she really did a great job in New York. I think it's gonna be a little bit different here on Notre Dame's home floor. And in that game, Neil Ivy was missing one of her best players and leaders, yeah. Sonia Citron, and she really gives this team a calming presence when she's out on the floor. Coach Ivy calls her the glue of this team, keeps them together. You look at the turnovers, shows a little bit of how fast paced the basketball was and how defensively sound both teams were. Another right. turnover here, Hidalgo trying to pick it up. Hidalgo with the Euro, has it blocked off the glass. All right, stuck in the corner. Has to try and dish it off, gets Woolley out by the monogram. 
Ollie from Brisbane, Australia. One of the two leaders on this team. Atham goes in too hard off the glass, but another big offensive rebound for the Orange. Shot clock violation, though. The Rams doing a good job of playing defense for the full 30 seconds. They've had numerous almost shot clock violations. Then they just had a shot clock violation on that play. But Notre Dame's got to continue to try to box out. Cannot give up offensive rebounds and second chance points, points to Syracuse. I'll go. Picks up the dribble. Watson on the elbow. KK Bransford gets the three. Notre Dame up by one. Cincinnati, Ohio. McDonald's All American, as you know. Part of this great group. Irish rosters, McDonald's All Americans. Fair. Hitting circles. Perkins gets caught with the happy food. Notre Dame's getting so many good looks at the basket. A few of those perimeter jumpers were in and out, rattled around the rim, but very good looks at the buck and a couple of missed layups. So still a tight game here. Syracuse with three turnovers in the past minute and 35 seconds. Watson. To dribble in. Back off to Hidalgo. Sees a lane and goes for the layup. That's what she's done all year long and is so good at. Very good finish and excellent footwork to get to the rim and really reach and extend that arm on the layup. Perkins tries to get by Hidalgo. Needs to run the set. Perkins, it's an offensive foul. Hannah Hidalgo taking the charge. Perkins was running the point, and Anna DeWolf was really doing a good job of denying Fair the ball. Here's a look at the replay as we see it. Hidalgo just stepped in there and took, took the charge on Perkins. Perkins lowered her shoulder, and that's definitely going to be an offensive charge call when you lower your shoulder. Offensive on the other side. Trading fouls back and forth here early. Notre Dame's got four, while Syracuse got three. Or we head into the bonus. Final three minutes left in this quarter. And as you can see here, Notre Dame is coming into the backcourt. KK Bransford just took a turn denying fair. Now KK's picking up three-quarter court to try to disrupt the flow and rhythm of the Syracuse offense. Citron face guarding Fair. See how that matchup goes. Fair gets back to basketball. Fair gets by Citron, and that's the concern for Citron to face guard. Or doesn't have necessarily the mobility, had the little bit of a knee injury that sidelined her for their first matchup. Now has to go up against a dynamic player like Fair. Great, and good heads up play by Fair to put the ball on the floor and alleviate the pressure by just going to the basket and attacking the rim and finishing. Westbound, bounce pass to Marshall. Orange pick it up, Perkins, let it go out of bounds, off the tip, go the other way. Good hustle play by KK Bransford to put that pressure in the backcourt. KK's got three points. Made a field goal from three. KK Bransford's been fabulous. 51 points over her last five games. Starting to find herself here in this middle stretch of ACC play. Citron, and the West Bell coming in off the baseline. Stuck underneath, oh boy! What a basket for Maddie Westbell. Can't spin anymore. Just put it up over your head. Beautiful, you know she practiced that play. There was nowhere to go. She was facing the opposite basket, was able to spin it in. That's something you practice as a player like Maddie Westbell that works so hard. Foul called and snap Marshall. Syracuse trying to get something going on the offensive end of the floor. 
Notre Dame doing a good job in their man-to-man -man defense. They love to run a lot of screening action for Fair. So fighting screens for Notre Dame is going to be important. And for Fair, just waiting for that play to develop off the high ball screens. And we watched them in practice today. They said a lot of those tried to work on letting Fair go to work in the open court with the creativity and her ball handling skills. Fair will make her fourth free throw of the day. It's Runner funny when, when Niel spoke in the, um, in the interview, she said to DeAsia Fair after the game last game, like, when are you gonna when graduate? Are you graduating? <laughs> She's just a lot to contend with. She's at the top of every team scouting report. Bear gets it. Making a four point play off the free throw. That's why you gotta keep asking when she's gonna graduate because <laughs> she makes plays like that. Exactly. Sonia Citron pulls up for a mid-range two. Marshall's there with the rebound, pulls it out. The Wolf pulls up from the ACC loco. Can't convert. Well, you'll get numbers on her side. They're working down the shot clock. Sees an opening. Fade away off the back of the rim. Woolley's there with the rebound. Had a reset to 20, now 15 seconds on the shot clock. Foul underneath. Called against Westbelt. Westbelt went over to help. The Citron was kind of stuck with that post player, guarding the post, trying to full front deny, so Westbelt came over to help. She gets the foul call. Wilson goes to the line. For Notre Dame, they want to try and keep Maddie Westfeld off the foul ledger as much as possible. Only played 24 minutes due to fouls in these two teams' first meeting. Had 16 points and 10 rebounds, though. I have to imagine if she was able to be in the game longer without as much foul trouble, could have played a factor down the stretch. Right, Maddie Westfeld just so important to this team. Her leadership, her ability to score inside out. She cannot go to the bench with foul. She's just an integral part of both the offense and the defense for Notre Dame. Officiating staff for two, Cisco Stevens, Mark Retsch, and Crystal Apolesi. Make sure the right players are on the court that need to be. Wilson makes her first. Wilson's a six foot junior from Rochester, New York. Went to Bishop Kearney High School. I hear she has an awesome gumbo recipe too. Oh. She loves to cook. But according to Coach Jack, she hasn't had any of the gumbo yet. So Ooh. she might get benched for that. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta feed Coach, right? <laughs> Wilson, also one of those players that came over with Coach Jack from Buffalo. Notre Dame, gonna hold for the last shot if they want it. Here in this first quarter. Nine seconds now, Hidalgo. Tries to float it in off the glass, four seconds. Woolley will heave one up for three, but after one quarter of play, Syracuse leading by one to the break. It's a top 25. Oh, scoring. Speaks to the defense of both these two teams. Westbelt called for the travel. Another turnover. Moving Notre Dame to five on the night. Fair will bring it up. Leading the team with nine points. For one quarter of play. Torres off to Fair. Rice underneath. What a basket. For Alea Rice. Hidalgo gets the layup herself. Wide open. Syracuse transition defense needs to 
get in front of Hannah Hildago to prevent that wide open layup. Fair works by Citron. Fair tosses one up, gets her own rebound. Burrows back off to Rice. Our offensive rebound for this orange too. Burrows bounce pass down the wood. Foul called. And Hidalgo commits the foul. Hey, look at the rebounds. Not what you want to have happen here the offensive if you're Notre boards, Dame. Right, the offensive boards are really hurting. Uh, so we got a box out for Notre Dame and Syracuse. Quickly. Latham spawns off the inbound. Latham is a good perimeter shooter as well as being a very good paint presence for Syracuse. She's just a freshman but doesn't play like one. Citron has space. Bransford with the rebound. Trying to go for the hook. Burrows with the rebound. Push tempo. Rice kick off to Burrows. Latham. Looking for a travel home fan wanted. Block called against Hidalgo. She's visibly frustrated at that one. The Notre Dame defense did a good job of sliding over to help. And Anna DeWolf prevented Fair from touching the ball for the entire possession on that play. But Hidalgo oh. fouled, so now Syracuse has the ball under their own bucket. Hidalgo now has two already so far. Wolf hit with the screen. Coverage of Burroughs, though. Fair. Closely guarded. Heaves one up. Doggo. Tries to drive in. Gets fouled. She'll go to the line to shoot two. Hill Doggo's been able to just dribble up the length of the court and really attack the basket. Good heads up play by Hildago. Syracuse transition defense really needs to put a body in front of Hannah Hildago going to the bucket. Hildago, 79.2% free throw shooter. Make it a first. Hildago coming into this one, six steals away from average, from getting 100 total steals already on this young season for the freshman. Just an impressive defensive play. Her footwork on defense is fun to watch. I know she played for her father, and I know he's proud of her, the way she plays defense. She's able to take chances to get those steals because of her quickness and, and recovery ability. Watch bounce. It will pick one up. That's the control. It tries to get it to DeWolf. It's a foul and a push. Coach Jack not happy with it. It almost looked like she tripped over the ball when she lost the handle. That's what Coach Jack thinks, from what I can tell, the way she's talking to the official over there. Georgia Woolley charged with the foul. All those bang, bang plays. Westbound from the charity strike. She's at her best scoring when she can put the ball on the floor and get her rhythm. Great pull-up jumper right at the top of the key there for Maddie Westbelt and has the crowd happy too. Notre Dame leading by one. Wooly. Scored a thousand points earlier this year versus St. Francis as she gets fouled. That's not someone you want to foul. Georgia Woolley, we talked about a leading the ACC free throw percentage. You don't want to say it's going to be almost automatic for her, but you're almost giving up a bucket automatically by you putting her on the line. She's a 92% shooter. I'd say that's pretty automatic <laughs> in my mind. <laughs> How are you but as a player? 
I was like probably 84, but I was probably like fourth on the team. The announcer's <laughs> jinx right there is. <laughs> she missed it. <laughs> Wooly misses fourth. the first. But she's an outstanding player from Australia, and it helps Coach Jack to have two fifth-year seniors, Wooly and Fair, that have played for her before in Buffalo. Misses them both. Great announcer jinx. <laughs> Sorry, Wooly. Westbound. Wilson comes down with the rebound for the Orange. Wilson. Post player gives it off to Rice. Rice. High off the glass to get the basket. Rice is so athletic. She's able to put the ball on the floor and just kiss it off the glass. But I'll go. Has it swatted away, but it's a foul. Coming against Wilson. Hildago's 4 of 7 from all those layups she's getting. She's got 10 points already. And she's been able to dribble through whoever they Syracuse has put on her defensively. Carl makes the first. She went six of six from the line against Wake Forest in the last game. Eight time freshman of the week. That's them both. Back up by one. Latham in the paint. Wilson can't come down with it. Loose ball. Titron's able to find herself with it. Citron on the line. Would have been a two if it went. Does not. So if Citron keeps it in play, they'll reset the shot clock. Boy. Down to an open Wilson and great dish off there. But also, it's difficult to have help rotations when you're trying to face guard deny on fair. There was no rotation because Citron was on that same wing on that dribble drive and penetrate. But good heads up, drop off, bounce pass by Woolley. Watson's got to come out to get it. Olsen poked it away. Transfer from Oregon. Go picked it up. Watson down low. Gets fouled. This will take us to our media timeout. Good one brewing in South Bend between two top 25 teams. Them, they're 16 and two on the year, six and one in conference play. The first time that they have been that record in conference play since Coach Jack was a sophomore on the team of the Big East. That's unbelievable, and she's done a fabulous job. They're undefeated at home. They're on a five-game win streak, propelled by that big upset win in Syracuse, beating Notre Dame. They have a great one-two punch in, in uh, Woolley and Fair, but then they also have Elena Rice, who's playing well. Latham, just the freshman, she put up big numbers against Notre Dame and hit the winning bucket against Clemson in a one-point win against Clemson, but a five-game win streak, hats off to the job that Coach Jack is doing, building this program, and she is a program builder. She's done it before in other places. It was just a pleasure talking to her today at practice, just to hear her philosophies. She had us ready to go. We were ready to rock and roll <laughs> for Coach Jack after watching But for the running, around. yes, we yeah. were. <laughs> <laughs> I am trying to get it underneath. Now Hidalgo gets by the screen, mid-range shot. Watson comes down with the rebound. Both these two teams we were talking about in the break haven't created an offensive system. It's just been so fast and go to the rack for both these two teams. It really has for Notre Dame. It's been a one or two pass offense, sometimes a no pass and then shot. Branchford has it denied by Rice. G comes down with it. Rice fade away. And that's where Rice thrives in the open court. She has nice moves. A lot of these Syracuse players have excellent one-on-one -on -one moves and can just break down the defense, especially if you allow them 
to get going in the open court play. I'll go. Ball screen from West Bell. Citron to the bounce pass to Watson. Lose it for a quick second. Watson. Every to the basket. Coming in, putting six points a game for the Irish. Consistent face post play for him. Dagger three from Rice. Rice was the freshman of the year when she played at Florida A&M, then she went to Auburn. This is her third school and she really gets the job done on that pull up jumper. She has a beautiful mid range game for Coach Jack. West Bell, trying to go underneath with it. Has it denied. Tap by Bransford, all he's able to control it. Notre Dame coming down with the rebound. Now Hidalgo. Set up the offense. Ball roll out of bounds, and it will go Syracuse way. Just hit off her leg, just mishandled the ball there by KK Bransford. And on the other end of the floor, give credit to Elena Rice, the way she's on the ball defending Hannah Heldago. She is one of the best on the ball defenders for this Syracuse squad, and she's doing a good job of just trying to keep on the last couple of possessions, trying to keep Hildago in front of her. They're gonna clear out Rice. Two minutes to go left in this first half. Rice goes up and under. Rice leading the way with 11 points now for the Orange. Citron from the corner, got it. She wanted that one. She, she was Needed that one as well. <laughs> but nailed that one from the corner. Beautiful stroke by Citron. Bully with the offensive rebound. With the free lane to the basket. Marshall underneath, off to DeWolf. Citron ricochets off the iron. Under a minute to go. Bear steps back and hits it, and it's going to be the timeout for Neil Ivy and her squad to talk things over. That is one of. That is that is one of her bread and butter plays, that step back. She is able to create space. The ball is on a string, so she's able to create that step back and just allows her the space to get that three off over Hannah DeWolf. Hannah DeWolf just kind of backed up a little bit, but that is her bread and butter, her great footwork by Fair. Syracuse are big off the boards tonight. They've been doing it all year long. They have, and that's one of the things that they hang their hat on. They're able to, on the missed shots, just break to the backboard, and they're able to get so many second chance opportunities, and that is really breaking Notre Dame's back right now. They have nine offensive boards for Syracuse. Yeah, we're plus 12 in their last meeting, something that Coach Neil Ivey talked to her team about throughout this week, saying, we gotta know, we gotta be better. Especially in man-to-man, -man, you have to be responsible for, for your person, and you've gotta help the person face guarding. The person face guarding has a difficult job they don't know what's going on behind them when they're face guarding. So it takes a lot of communication and box out responsibilities in man-to-man -to, -man to keep Syracuse off the offensive glass. Citron for three and gets the bounce. Citron really getting in rhythm now over these last couple of games after a long layoff with that knee injury earlier in the season. Rice steps back behind the three. 
Woolley is there. Another rebound and another basket for Georgia Woolley. Good job, boy. Woolley just kind of sitting on that weak side where most of the shots coming from the left wing are going to come off on the right side. So she did a great job of just collecting that and finishing it off the glass. Dalgo has to play hero ball and can't get it. Out. Pulled out. Passes off to Latham. Latham from the lane. Hidalgo loses it. Picked up by the Orange. Big rebound. Ow. Citron intercepts it up to Hidalgo. Hidalgo, West Bell. Citron from the corner, sees the baseline. Mid-range, can't go. Rolly. Fair, wide open. Launches one from three and bullseye. Well, Doggo kind of got stuck in that screen. Citron tried to help her. But you cannot give Fair any light of day. She will knock down those threes. Watson beyond the arc. And I'll go. Sees a lane, tries to go up. Wood denies it. Ira Wood. Second year as a captain. Transferred from Temple after her freshman year. Recruited by Jack back when she was at Buffalo. Wood being a Buffalo native, now finally get to reconnect. Right, she wanted to go away for school, so she went down to Philadelphia to Temple, and now she's back with Coach Jack at Syracuse. Citron can't hit the three. Hidalgo can't get it. Citron down with the rebound. No roll. Now fair. Pushing up tempo. Fair rattles around. It'll be a jump ball called. But on the back end of the play, Latham slowly working over to the bench. Wilson will come on to the court for the orange. Here's that high pace that we talked about to start this game. Some of these players look a little winded the way this just went up and down pretty quickly. Citron tries to split the defenders and gets fouled. Well, Citron carrying up. I know we put the highlights up of her two threes in the first half. She did a great job at Wake Forest. She hit four threes at Wake, really getting her legs back after that injury. And doing it at both ends of the floor. She plays so hard on defense and on offense. She's such a glue player for Notre Dame. Now DeAsia Fair taking a turn guarding Citron. Now Citron honored before today's game, which has recorded her at a thousand point at UVA. Irish get a big basket. Try and cut in the Orange lead. Fair steps back, trying to get by Citron. Sees an opening. Wilson underneath tries to go up strong, but it's a rebound for Wood. Too hard off the glass. Westbound controls it. Gets it to Hidalgo. Hidalgo with the Euro. Watson and Wilson ties it up. Jump ball. Possession arrow in Farah. Good job by Watson to crash the boards, but goes back to Syracuse. And the Leprechaun is very excited behind us here today. You think? <laughs> it's pretty loud right now. I think he's on the broadcast. Yeah. Notre Dame in their man-to-man -man defense. Citron guarding fair. Citron on the face guard of fair. Shielding her from the ball. Rice. Has to push past Hidalgo. But Westbound's able to pick it up. Hidalgo to Watson, uneven, but makes it. Nice touch pass by Hidalgo and good body control on that finish by Watson. 
pair off to the corner. Foul comes, no shot, will be on the floor. Watson come off along with DeWolf. Wilson tries to go over at Marshall. I'll go. Picks up the ball. Gets bodied. Gets bodied by two players, it looked like. Wasn't sure that the whistle was gonna blow on that, but she put her head down, went right to the basket. Nobody picked her up in transition. A foul called against Sanaya Wilson. Her third. I'll have Coach Jack go to the freshman, Sophie Burrows, to come back on to the court. So Hildago has the ND freshman record with 94 steals coming into this game, leads the ACC in scoring, and has 15 games with 20 points or more. So she's doing an outstanding job and also leading the nation in scores or steals. So she's having a really fabulous freshman year. Can't ask for much more out of a freshman <laughs> to come really in, can't. especially with cards Notre Dame been dealt, losing Olivia Miles. Have Hannah Hidalgo quickly picking back up where she was. Right, Notre Dame's had to adapt through a lot of different injuries. A lot of good players sitting over there on the sideline. On the Picked bench up the dribble. Back. It's an outlet pass. Marshall, set ball going all over the place, and it's a travel. Called against West Bell. Got stuck with a trio of orange defenders around her. She had the ball in her hands there for a second. Just moves that pivot foot. It looked like she moved that left pivot foot slightly and the official was right there to call that travel on Batty West Bell. So now Notre Dame playing man-to-man -man defense under their own, bu under the Syracuse bucket. Bully steps back over the back. Latham great call with the foul. Out. Great, great, sorry, great box out by Maddie Westbelt. She just put a body on Latham, so it was apparent to the official that she came over the back. Latham didn't agree with that call, but it was a nice box out by Maddie Westbelt. Irish on a 6 0 run over the last two minutes. Bransford. Has to stop on a dime. Brantford trying to get that shot up over Woolley. Woolley's six feet, so she's got a little bit of a wingspan. Nowhere to go. She put up a wall of defense. Doggo inbounding. Tipped away. Hurts chaos. Now Trying to set something up here. Trying to get it to Citron. Westbeld with the shot clock expiring. Maddie Westbeld. Beautiful step back on that baseline jumper. Hidalgo with the steal. Hidalgo. Basket good. Emotion showing for the freshman. Notre Dame leading by one. And the crowd likes it. The crowd cheering on their feet. Notre Dame remains in their man, trying to put the pressure to dictate the pace for Syracuse. Fair. Responds. The two point guards showing off. Hidalgo. Off to Bransford. Good layup. Beautiful run by Bransford to get down the floor. And good vision by Hidalgo to find her. Foul called against Westfield. That'll be her second. And it will take us to a TV timeout. Dalgo passes it off to Bransford. Irish leading by one. Hannah 
Adalco leading the way for this Irish team in both points and assists. Nothing new. Nothing new, and what a momentum shift for that last couple of minutes there. The game was back and forth, a little bit of a track meet that we thought it was going to be, but Notre Dame's able to get back on top with that little run in the last few minutes. Latham able to net at home. Syracuse picks up a big bucket. Irish up until that point, we're on a 12-2 run. Hidalgo gets fouled, bodies go flying. She's used to that with all those brothers she plays with. She knows how to take a hit, that's for sure. Something that this Irish team just can't afford is another injury. And Marish out for the year. Sam Prosper out for the year. Olivia Miles questionable with the knee injury. Don't have that depth of a roster as well to afford that many injuries either. Yeah, you really have to be adaptable in your lineup when you have dealing with injuries like that. And the way Hannah Hildago plays, the durability, I mean, she just plays so hard on every single possession. And she plays both ends of the floor. So she, she has to go to the bench a few times to get a little breather with the way she plays. And both teams, I mean, Coach Jack's team plays so hard. Yeah. Hidalgo, eight from eight from the three throw line. 17 points. Hidalgo had 32 points, a career high when these two teams last faced off in late December. Burroughs, stuck in the lane. Latham, now will pick up her dribble and get stuck, but Woolley with the shot clock expiring tries to toss it over her back. Coach Jack asking for a foul call over there. I think she feels like that was a very physical possession defensively. Hannah Hildago just going to work on the ball handler, Perkins, on that last possession, trying to pick her pocket. Watson trying to get it down to Westbeld. Westbeld gets fouled by Woolley. Great job by Westbell, just pinning her defender as deep as she could in the paint and asking for the ball. She finally gets it. Goes to the free throw line where she's very effective and averaging 13 points and nine boards. That's Georgia Woolley's third foul of the night to send Westbell. Who makes the first. She had a concussion, Maddie Westbelt, on January 4th at Pitt, sat out for the North Carolina game, which was a loss for Notre Dame. But really getting back into her rhythm here. She's number three in rebounds per game in the ACC. Keeps her rhythm, free throw line to make both. Irish up by three. Wood has it blocked by Watson. Fair is there to pick it up. Go Irish's way. Offensive look. Can imagine Coach Jack's all too happy with is just the Asia Fair just trying to get in and just play hero ball a little bit. Right, I think the bigger lineup having KK Bransford, Watson, and Westbelt in at the same time is really effective right now on the rebounds and on the shot contest when Syracuse has the ball. Down to Westbelt. Latham with the rebound. Wally sees Perkins. Wally still in motion on the three. Watson kicks it off to Bransford. Bransford looking to the roll of Watson, but get that out of here. Latham rejects it at the rim. Hitron all over fair, but lets up the baseline. High pass, Woolley at the six feet stature. is able to pick it up, but it's gonna be a foul against Hidalgo. Hidalgo tipped that ball, got a piece of it, but then looked like she almost jumped right on top of the player on the floor, but great hustle and great 
tenacity on defense by Hannah Hildago, the freshman. Here comes the Wolf for KK Bransford. Probably Hidalgo's third foul. It's an Irish team that consistent players so far in this game, all with in foul trouble, heading down the stretch, something they were accustomed to when they last played Syracuse. Bully has to heave it up. Rice is fouled. Nice job by, by Rice to sneak in there for that board. She was on the weak side, just came over, got the rebound. Syracuse continues their work on the offensive glass here. Rice in there amongst the trees, but able to grab that ball. Doing a nice job for Coach Jack. She runs the floor beautifully. She has a beautiful mid-range game. Averaging 11 points, five boards for Alana Rice. Coach talked about, I don't know how necessarily to coach being a point guard, but I know how to coach rebounding and being a post player. And that's what I'm gonna instill on my team. Everybody on my roster is gonna <laughs> learn how that's to right. rebound, which I thought was so insightful. And right. she knows who she needs to bring in as well to coach Deja Fair in these situations as Citron tries to go to the basket. Exactly, and she was such a great rebounder herself yeah. when she played for Syracuse for head coach Barb Jacobs, and her assistant coach was her point guard. So what a special situation for her to be back with her point guard that she played with back in the 80s. It's gonna be a push going the other way. Gonna get it on Latham. Alyssa Latham, the freshman from Glenwood, Illinois. Back in the Midwest here, but got the foul call on that one. Foul was starting to stack up for both these two teams. A very physical game, she goes, First goes over the back to try to get the rebound, then just kind of knocks Kylie Watson out of bounds. They call a push. But what a job she is doing for Syracuse. She leads the Syracuse team in rebounds and blocks. She was a freshman of the week back on December 4th in the ACC, and now Kylie Watson is on the line. Someplace where Watson could improve on the air. She makes the first, comes in at a 55% free throw shooter. Most definitely, right? She wants to bring that percentage up. She's doing a good job right now of making her presence known in the paint on the defensive end, but needs to convert those free throws. She's averaging also close to two blocks a game, which is tied for six in the ACC. So she's making her presence known on the defensive side right now and rebounding, as we've seen throughout this game. She's got to do a job on the boards for Kylie Watson against these Syracuse players who are so tenacious crashing the boards. Rice tries to drive in, gets hacked at. Two shots. Now that's Matthew Westbelt's fourth here with 121 left to go in the third quarter. And that's gonna have a big impact on this rebounding situation. And there she goes to the bench. And it was the same story when these two teams played. Westbelt only played 24 minutes due to how quickly she got into foul trouble and what I have to imagine they're gonna have to be very smart in how they wanna play Westbelt the senior. Exactly, because that big lineup was really a little more effective in this third quarter than it was in the first half in terms of keeping Syracuse off the glass and they're gonna keep coming. That's one of the things they hang their hat on, just getting those misses and putting them back in. Bransford. will stay Irish's way. She was wide open, so she decided to take that one. Nobody near her anywhere for KK Bransford. Not her biggest strength, but she has improved a great deal, both on the free throw line and with the three-pointer. I think Notre Dame can be a little more picky in their shot selection. Citron from the elbow. Wood with down with the rebound. Rice for three. Citron comes away with it. 
Wally picks it up, keeps the dribble. Up to Burrows. Burrows on the Euro in the layup. High IQ play by Georgia Woolley. Tildago and Citron kind of rushed that one and just got themselves in trouble with that turnover, but Citron looking to make a three there. The Wolf with two. <laughs> Tie ball game. Shot clock's expired. Syracuse. Hold for the last shot. Fair. That was a nice drop off by Fair, but it, a little low. But Wood just couldn't handle it, went out of bounds. So six, six, six and a half seconds left for Notre Dame to try to get a, the last bucket of the quarter. Hidalgo. Screen set by Watson. Hidalgo. Can't get it to fall. We go into the fourth, tied up. A top head. Syracuse, if they were to be able to pick up the win, it would be the first sweep of the Irish in program history for this Orange team. And if they were to win here, it would be the first time they've ever beat Notre Dame inside Purcell Pavilion. And what a confidence boost that would be for Coach Jack. It's a tough stretch of the schedule for both of these teams. So we'll see what happens here, but it's been a tight one throughout. The tie score in the, going into the fourth. Holy. Taking on DeWolf to the basket. Watson coming down with the rebound. So Watson, be Watson now has three rebounds. That was a good grab there. She's got six points, three rebounds on two of three from the field. So the ball goes back to Syracuse, it looks like, on the tie up. Dalgo picking up her fourth. Now fair, high off the glass. Balgo now with four fouls, with Westbelt with four fouls as well. Huge storyline brewing down final couple of minutes, but Citron trying to get the bunny, but it'll be a foul against Wood. Great cut by Citron. Just went right behind the defender, had a wide open layup, just couldn't get it to fall, but then continued to attack on the offensive glass, got her own rebound. It's gonna be Notre Dame's ball for, with an opportunity to score under their own basket. Citron to inbound. Citron sitting pretty right now, only has one foul, have to imagine. Iris are gonna have to lead on her defensively, especially how well she's been face guarding Gage Fair. Gonna have to have her pick up the slack here a little bit with some of your best rebounders off the floor as well as Hidalgo now. And she is a great rebounding guard, but she also gives this team that poise and composure when they need it from a leadership standpoint. Fair on the run, too strong, loose ball. Anybody is still going away. Wood comes down with it. Latham from the baseline. Latham is a very good shooter from that baseline and the, and the high post area, so you have to come out and contest her. She's able to knock that one down. Beautiful jump shot on the, on the mid-range game for Latham, the freshman. Marshall, too strong. There with the hesitation. They're waiting for the offense to run. Bryce driving in. Marshall rejects it up to DeWolf. DeWolf cuts it back on Fair. She gets fouled. And some extracurriculars. As the official officiating crew will talk things over underneath the basket. Here's DeWolf going to the bucket on the replay. And they just got jammed up against the backboard there. And a little pushing and shoving, which is normal in a very physical contest like this. But good job by DeWolf to just put her head down and take it to the basket. The two of them just got tangled up. DeWolf knocks down the free throw. She's only, she only played uh, 
single digit minutes coming in, but. Makes them both. She has three points now. It's gonna be big spot for her to excel with the Irish in foul trouble. Fair, step back, bullseye. Fair is really getting into the rhythm now, whether she's going to the bucket or pulling up for that beautiful step back three. Swishes that one right on Citron. Now a whistle come with the freshman Latham picking up her fourth foul. These fouls are just really adding on to each other here for both these two teams. So Latham goes to the bench talking to Coach Jack on the sideline. Wolf walks it around fair, tries to float one in. Anna the Wolf finding herself here in this fourth quarter. That was a nice floater right over Wood, who's 6'3. The fouls Citron. are piling up. Her second. One possession game between these two teams. Wilson. Pivots her way around Marshall to get the basket. Nice touch off the glass by Wilson in there, right over Nat Marshall, who has a significant wingspan. Citron's fouled. Going to the hoop. Good heads up play to attack the basket there by Citron. Citron's got 10 points, five boards. She's made both free throws for the night. Shoots 96%, which leads the league from the free throw line for Citron. She does so many things well. She can affect the game even if she doesn't have the ball in her hands. Now Wilson, her fourth foul. Citron missing the first. <laughs> Here comes Burroughs. These coaches gonna have to look down the bench. Especially key moments. It'll be interesting to see when Yale Ivy elects to bring Maddie Westbell back into the game. And now with the bigs on the bench, it'll be a little bit easier for Notre Dame to rebound, you would think, with the lineup that Syracuse has on the floor, four guards and a post. Fair from the corner. Woolley is there underneath. Can't get it. Wood comes down with the rebound, though. Once again, Woolley and Wood all over the glass on the offensive boards. Crashing as soon as they see a shot go up. It's great fundamental basketball. Citron with the step back. Wood coming down with it. Woolley to Burroughs for the layup and the foul count it. So two offensive boards down one end for Syracuse, a great defensive board by Wood. And then they run the floor very well to get the score. Burroughs just came into the game. Woolley finds her underneath for a right, le right hand layup on the left side of the floor. So Syracuse just made a little run there. Irish taking a timeout. They want to talk things over as a big six minutes brewing here in South Bend, Syracuse leading. The warp rift is expanding. All worlds within the Calaxian. Corin leading all scores with 22 points. And she is just proving why she's been able to rack up over 3,000 points in her career. And she loves that step back three. She's able to get into the rhythm and the flow here. She is a walking bucket, which makes a coach's job easier. You know, Coach Leggett Jack coached her for a couple of years, made a deep run in the NCAA tournament, so she's just so happy that all of her hard work is coming to fruition here as Syracuse really doing a good job. And DeAsia Fair, as usual, leading the way. Charles makes the end one, and her one of only 16 NCAA Division I players to score 3,000 points. As she picks up a steal, Gets it to Rice. Rice, quickly to Woolley. Pump fake. 
but got caught with the happy feet. Just moved her pivot foot on that one right in front of the Syracuse bench. And that last pass by Maddie Westbelt right to the defense. Notre Dame really needs a bucket here. They've got to settle down in the half court set. Run their plays and try to get a high percentage shot on this possession, important possession here to make a run. Westbelt back in with four fouls. And an errant throw, but it will be a kick ball. Notre Dame will retain possession. Well, he'll take a step back. Verdalgo to inbound. Westbound. Fires it over the basket. Burrows. Syracuse. Looking to Rice. Wood. Lost it. Westbell comes up with it. Has possession. Citron comes away. Bounces it to Hidalgo. Tipped off. Irish. Will inbound. Citron trying to thread the needle on that through a lot of traffic. See if Notre Dame can get a bucket here. They need a good look at the basket here. Instead, they turned it over. Good hands by Fair. She's so quick. She's got those quick hands, just able to knock it right off of Citron's leg on the side out of bounds. That Fair disrupting Citron. Burrows. Off to Rice. Rice. Stuck on baseline. It'll be a timeout by Coach Jack. Coach Jack electing to use a timeout. Get her team out from under the basket. Someone in this room stole. Have been dominant in the fourth quarter. They're plus nine. The same differential right now as they saw Last time these two teams met in the JMA Wireless Dome, and it really speaks to what Coach Jack talks about, a blue-collar mentality. When the going gets tough, we're going to go tough with it, and we're going to stay locked in and keep our feet present in the moment. And they have. They just keep attacking the bucket like they did there on a layup, and they are 6 of 12 before that shot, 50% for the field in the fourth quarter, whereas Notre Dame is 1 for 6 for 16%. How big is this possession for Notre Dame right now? They need to score to get, they are at, in a funk offensively. You need to get a field goal or get to the free throw line and score here. Hidalgo tries a floater into the cylinder. It's unsuccessful. If you're Syracuse, are you trying to work down the shot clock? I think you're trying to work down the shot clock and Notre Dame's got to pick up the intensity on defense. They want to work the clock a little bit, see if they can get Notre Dame to foul them again, as they have been fouling too much. They need to have the discipline to play defense without fouling. Here come the Irish now. Westbeld for three. Off the front of the iron. The shooting woes are continuing here in this fourth quarter. Notre Dame just cold from the field. Syracuse on a 7-0 run over the last 2.32. Ten second on the shot clock. Fair gonna clear him out. Tries to get by to Wolf. Be a foul going the other way. Yeah, great box out by Kylie Watson. Wood just took her and, <laughs> and almost threw her on the baseline. A good defense by Anna DeWolf on Fair. Fair was able to get a good look at the basket. Kylie Watson. Nice job on the box out. Walks all the way the length of the floor to the free throw line. And the Irish really need Kylie Watson to knock these two down. Today, Irish have been 85% from the free throw line, 17 for 20. It's for Watson, it's two for four. Cannot get it to fall. No points over the last Three minutes and 22 seconds for this Notre Dame team. Finally, basket goes in. 10 point game, favor of the Cuse. 
Notre Dame in that man-to-man -man defense now, trying to get a stop on this possession, which is three and a half left. Bully for three, Market. Willie's just been a steady, steady player for this Syracuse team. 12 points and nine boards. Bransford underneath. Watson coming down with the rebound. Possession arrow in favor of Syracuse. Every time Syracuse needs a big bucket, Willie or Fair seem to step up at just the appropriate times, as fifth-year seniors do and the leaders for Coach Leggett Jack's team here for the Syracuse Orange. Well, he's got 12 so far tonight. Under three minutes left to play in this one. And this is a play they worked on today at the shoot around that double horn set so that Fair has all the ability to just create off these two screens on top of the, at the elbows. And you saw the entire bench making the play call for the horns to let DeAsia Fair go to work. They want to use the clock, which is what Coach Leggett, Jack, is telling her team now to use it. And that will do it for Maddie Westbeld, her fifth foul of the night. Hours without her here for these next two minutes and 45 seconds. And starting to head for the exits with fair fouled. As we mentioned, a tough part of the schedule for both teams. Yeah. Notre Dame saw us go see UConn on Saturday. Coach and Neil Ivey talked to us about it. This is as light the NCAA tournament as you can get. You have 72 hours. You have travel involved. You're seeing top 25 teams that are fabulous. You have two of the best guards right now in the country and fair and then Beckers for UConn. And you got to play that in Gamble, a small, tight arena. It's going to be loud and going to be rocking at 8 o'clock. It is going to be rocking at Gamble, and Paige Beckers is truly back from those injuries. Had a great game against Marquette. Scored 20 or more points in the last six games, so she's really got UConn in a groove. That means them both, and for Syracuse, it doesn't get any easier as well. They have to take on Virginia Tech inside the Dome on Sunday. Right, and then at Louisville. ACC is a tough conference this season, as it always is. Fair walks away with it. Syracuse on a 12-1 run over the last four minutes. Latham streaks in. And Latham and Fair just seem, seem to have that sixth sense, that connection. That's exactly the pass that Fair made at the end of the Clemson game. And the rookie got the winning bucket for Syracuse over Clemson by one point just a few games ago. Irish scoring woes continue, have not scored the past five minutes and 30 seconds. That could change here with a pass up to Hidalgo. And Hidalgo finally bucket. gets, right, gets back on the board. Long time for the Irish. Can't have those lapses. There have been some lapses by Notre Dame, even against Wake Forest. They went for a three minute spurt where they had a numerous turnovers, just too many turnovers. And that's just about focus and precision. And they weren't able to execute and get into their continuity on offense. And Syracuse is able to take advantage of it tonight. Rice drives in, makes the basket. Talk to, that, talk to Coach Jack. What is this team capable of? And she said it's capable of whatever we put our minds to. We are a family, and we're going to back each other up as Hidalgo launches a three. And it's a big one there. Try and cut into it. Notre Dame trying to cut into this lead, but I loved uh, Coach Leggett Jack's philosophies this morning in shoot around. She talked about basketball being fun and the microcosm of life, and she really had some great philosophies that she shared with these players, these young student athletes who are doing a good job for her running the show and getting them to six, seven, and one now if they win this game in the next 30 seconds, which it looks like they're going to. Wood. These two games against Notre Dame have been culture defining for the Syracuse team. It has alerted the ACC world as Citron gets a three. This gives Syracuse a lot of credibility beating Notre Dame on their home floor. 
They gotta be happy about that. And they had three players in double figures, Rice with 19, Woolley with 12, and Fair with 24. So it wasn't just the, the Asia Fair show today. That was also effort by Syracuse. 11 points off the bench for this orange team. And then how about the offensive boards? 18 offensive boards for Syracuse. And they dominated the boards 49-34, which is one of the keys on the top of Notre Dame scouting report. Syracuse on the bench knows has just transpired over these last 80 minutes. Shot clock off. Asia Fair will dribble it out. Syracuse, for the first time in program history, sweep the Fighting Irish.